Test, test, test. Can you guys hear me? Hey, everybody. Just check in to see that you can hear me okay. If you can, give me some thumbs up and a hello and all of that. I'm going to be on in just a few, just making sure everything's going. So I thought I'd start that camera a little bit early. So I will be right back. Hello, 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 everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and it is Saturday, March 20th. It is the first day of spring. Can you believe it? And we're here for the great bead extravaganza. Uh, I'm going to turn my camera on in just a second here. Just getting a couple of last things all together. And it's great to have all you all here. It's uh, we're gonna have a fun time in three, two, <laughs> almost there, and one. There I am. Hey, I can see all y'all. I think all y'all can see me. Let me put my my tape measure over here for a moment there we go all righty well it is great to have everybody here on this saturday broadcast of the great beat extravaganza let me neaten myself up a little bit here 
Well, and I'm Kate Richberg. It's great to have everybody here. And a big shout out to Andrew and Candy. They both did a great job. And after uh, I uh, go, we're going to have the fantabulous Jill McKay after that. So uh, it's great to have everybody here. Um, wow, there's just everybody is, is jumping on and watching. It's great. Um, I saw a really cool, um, a really cool comment that I'm going to try and go back and find. There it is from, from Lynn, from Lynn Larkins. And Lynn, I love this, this comment, your comment, Miss Lynn, made my morning. It's, she said, you can see it, it's right on the screen. One of the first classes I took years ago at the Beat and Button Show was your stringing class. I've been doing it ever since. Thanks. I love that story. Thank you so much. That made my morning. Um, let's see. Gosh, everybody's here. Uh, it looks like uh, we're... People are jumping in from all over. Give a shout out uh, to uh, to me and let me know where you're watching from. I'd love to know that. Um, if you're brand new to um, my broadcasts, I broadcast every Wednesday and Friday right on the beadshop.com uh, YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, in our group. So let me show, let me throw. We're gonna do this. So uh, I'm gonna start with this, and then I'll end with this uh, for you guys. I'm just giving a little bit of time for everybody to to find the broadcast here. So um, we're gonna uh, we'll um, we'll vamp a little bit uh, while that happens. So uh, just as a reminder, you can find us on Bead Shop on social. Uh, you can follow us at beadshop.com on our Insta. You can follow us on The Bead Table, our Facebook group, um, which we'd love to have you join us over there. Beaders from all over the world. We're over 6,000 strong over there. And it's, I, I uh, am certainly uh, prejudiced, but I uh, think it's the best group on the web. <laughs> so, uh, and of course, you can, if you're watching us on, happen to be watching us on YouTube, uh, you can and hit that like button. We'd love to have you over there. And then for me, you know, I also do, um, bear with me here just a second. Um, I'll go back to the comments over here and go back over here. And you can find me also around the web. Um, you can follow me on my Instagram at beadkate. Uh, I'd love to see you over in my Facebook group, Create with Kate Richburg. I do a lot of metalsmithing um, content around that. And I know that some of you beaters also love metal work. Um, the great Brenda Schwader has a cool metal piece that's coming up. She's going to be doing that here for Great Beat Extravaganza. And then you can find me at uh, katerichburg.com, uh, of course, right there. So it'd be uh, great to see you uh, on any of our social. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, you guys, let me take this one down and I'll go over here. Uh, Let's see, where are we? Here we go. You can find all of the products and everything that I am working with today right on our website at beadshop.com. Uh, you can sign up for our newsletter so you'll be connected. Our kits went out this morning. They dropped this morning at midnight um, and they sold out pretty quickly, but we've got another drop coming uh, and that's starting. Uh, it's dropping in at noon Pacific time today on March 20th. So there'll be more of these kits. I'm going to show you the kit up close and personal here as well. And then you can also find me, you'll see, I'm going to point out here uh, one of the pieces that I'm wearing. I've had some questions about it, so I wanted to bring it up on this broadcast. My buttons, a lot of you guys grab those. It's great that uh, I, your support's really uh Amazing, astounding, I love it. And so you can find, if you're interested in finding my buttons for your wraps, and you'll see it more up close, you can find that right at katerichburgjewelry.com, right on my jewelry website. So that's that story. Let's see who's here. And I think I saw Janice here a second ago. I think I did, scrolling through. Gita is here, as she is uh, during the week, linking and sharing the bead love all the way over from... Um, from across the miles in Denmark. And yeah, I see there's uh, uh, Janice. She just uh, linked um, the kit uh, over on the YouTube chat. Um, so you'll be able to, um, to find that. 
Okay, so, uh, and I'll show you that in just a second. So it's great to have everybody here. Okay, well, it looks like we've got a bunch of people watching and a bunch of people hanging out. So I think we're ready to get started. Shall we? We shall. All righty. Well, if you guys have been watching earlier today, um, I uh, was, I loved Andrew's presentation on that art book and um, Candy's presentation on um, packaging and her earring designs and stuff like that. So it was great. So do remember, though, you guys, if you miss any of our broadcasts today, they're going to live uh, right on the Great Beat Extravaganza page in the announcements. So you'll be able to watch everybody uh, complete their projects, do their thing. Um, Remember that all of these companies and all of us do this out of the love of our heart and the love of beating. So we really, really all appreciate your support of our small businesses. Um, it means so much to us. So thank you so much, um, so much for that. Okay. So let's take a look at this project. I'm really excited to share this with you. This is um, kind of a... You know, at beadshop.com, we have projects that are that we're really known for, right? A lot of, you know, kind of, um, what I want to say, signature looks and stuff, right? And this is definitely a signature look for Bead Shop. This project is called Prairie, and um, it's one of Janice's favorites. She uh, wears one of these... Um, uh, a lot with just our natural wrapped leather, which is really beautiful. And uh, so I did a little take. Our Karen, Karen, who's our webmaster, she's a big fan of Prairie. And I thought this would be a fun one, especially for an event like this, for the Great Beat Extravaganza, because we, um, uh, I don't want to say attract, but our audience uh, is watching from all over the world, and we're all at different levels, right? And so the levels, the different levels, this is a project that speaks to the beginner, where you can um, learn some of our basic techniques. It also speaks, though, to the seasoned beater, because I'm going to share with you some tips and techniques um, that you will um uh, that you'll use not only in a project like this, but projects down the road. Okay, so, and I'll pop up all of our social and everything um, at the end of the broadcast as well, you guys. So don't stress about that. I'll put those cards back up. And then I've got a special offer for you guys and stuff like that. So just hang in there for me. Um, okay, so here's, here's the piece. This was the first kit, and this was called... Uh, foundry and it was in this beautiful saddle brown leather with this really kind of beautiful sage edge painting which we love and we sent you uh, these beads which we call our shadows beads in copper and in this really great uh, patina iris color and you got three or uh, five cards of this ceylon in regular um, regular size ceylon and you got five one yard cards that look like this and that's what these colors are here for the second kit um, we weren't able to get the cards so I restricted it where's my there it is so I restricted our thread to one color but I I think it'll look really nice um, we've got in the this kit is called foundry and it's the one that sold out this morning but we'll have another group as I said going in at noon uh, Pacific time okay and uh, it's a good uh, it's just a delicious color and as I told um, my crew that was watching yesterday on our free tip Friday this royal blue color was the color of my pageant dress and yes someday I'll tell that story um, anyway uh, so this is really, uh, it's really awesome leather. It's great. It's five millimeter strap leather. Um, and it works for so many projects, but we use it a lot in our prairie. Um, we also carry at bead shop and I wanted to show these before we got any further, right? Um, we carry this strap leather in a bunch of different colors. 
Okay, these are just a few. And if so, if you jump on to uh, to bead shop to our um, to our website, you can find all of just a bunch of great strap leather and some of it's printed like this, right? So if you miss out, if you're watching this later and you miss out on the kit, don't worry. You'll be able to kind of create your own colorway with that. And so let me go over the materials that we're going to use. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll get going. And I see everybody saying hello and everything. I don't want to be too distracted by the chat. So I'm sorry if I if I don't say hello to each and every one of you. But I see you out there. So thank you so much. I love these. Uh, I love all this saying hello and this beating conviviality. I love it. So I've got these old school thread snips. This is what we call our old school thread snips. And you can see this. This is my personal pair that's been kicking around in my box of tools for, I don't know, 20 years or something, right? It's pretty old, but we still have it. We still carry this on um, the beadshop.com website and we call them the old school thread snips. They're great and they're perfect for cutting things like Ceylon. Um, this is the Ceylon that we're using today. Uh, the one that comes in your kit is the gray color and it's regular sized, right? We carry the Ceylon in a variety of colors, so you can choose your own adventure with that, you guys. Um, whatever colors you love, uh, we've got them there for you. We also, I have it sitting here in front of me, at least I think I do. You could also, if you're making up your own kind of Again, choosing your own adventure with this. We also carry at beadshop.com this Chinese knotting cord, which j'adore. I love it. We use it in a lot of different projects that are on beadshop. And I think I have one of them sitting, I thought I did, sitting right here. Um, we do a lot of macrame with this. Um, and Brittany uses this a lot in her um flat macrame and her earring projects. This is one of, here it is. This is what I was looking for. You can see that Chinese knotting, actually this is CKC, so I'm gonna move that over. This is the Chinese knotting cord in action. This is one of our pieces that um, Ali Mori did for us. So we've got a lot of fun macrame things with this Chinese knotting cord. And it would work great with this prairie project. If you want things to be a little, um, if you want your thread to be a little bit thicker, right? And it comes in 0.4 millimeter, 0.5, and 0.8. Okay. So I'll put that aside. But for today, I've got the Ceylon in the regular. Then you're going to need an ADOT bead. And this ADOT, um, I just love this blue. And it is, um, all you really need is, um, you can use a single color of the ADOT. You can mix your ADOT, um, whatever works for you. Any bead uh, will work, especially, uh, you just have to test it and you have to just double check that it fits on your Ceylon. And this um, seed bead here, it's the 8-4704. It's the frosted opaque glazed rainbow soft blue. That's a mouthful, um, but it's great. Okay, so, uh, and it fits on here perfectly. I also have used, and you can see in my bracelet here, I'll show you a little bit closer, these shadow beads. If it's not a Kate Richburg project, you guys are take on a Kate Richburg, or a Kate Richburg take on a project, if it doesn't have a shadow in it, and I'm not kidding. I love these beads so much. This is called Kate's Favorite, this bracelet, and it's on the website, the bead shop website. Include, and I'm using one of my coin buttons here. But these shadows um, are, this this bracelet has been strung, I don't know, probably almost three or four years, right? And it's still holding up well. The leather has darkened quite a bit. It used to be, um, well, it still is, but it's dark now. It's the distressed gray in um, 1.5 millimeter, I think I used, but you could also use two millimeter. Um, but in your kit, you also get some of these shadows, not a full strand, but enough to complete this project. 
Okay, so just find anything that works that fits on your ceiling. Okay, and there was a quick question here that um, I'm going to answer here. Hale asked, would you mix the two chords in the same project? There's no reason why you couldn't, Hale, especially since let's take a look at the project that I actually already did. And let's break that down so you can see it. Let me get a little closer here. So this is the finished one. This is uh, this is uh, the foundry project. Oh, and someone asked about the shadow beads. Is it similar to a cornerless cube? It's very similar. It, these are kind of like a little hex. But the main thing is, you guys, you want that hole to be real big. See how big that hole is there, right? Oh, Hale, be that gutsy. Yeah, you can you can mix it up for sure, right? And so the the length of leather you get, you guys, is uh, a meter. So I broke up the meter into five sections, kind of, and I just started to do my macrame, okay? And so you can see that you could do sections of different colors. So here's the first one. It's that brown with the... Um, with the A dots on there. And then I went on the quarry to the um, Celadon with the shadows on it. And then I just went back and forth because you got three cards of this brown and two cards of the Celadon. So I used the shadows on the Celadon and the um, seed beads on the brown color. And I had plenty left over. You have plenty of beads to do this. So if you have more cords at home and you're like, this looks great, but maybe I want to add a little more macrame or something in here with a different cord or whatever, just do it, right? Just jump in and, um, and add something in, okay? So let's get this, um, this party started. Um, I want to show you the clasp that we're using. And I'm going to go ahead and jump on and um, glue this clasp on first. Now, before I even do that, though, let me lift this. Okay. And someone's asking um, about finding the broadcast on your um, on your computer. Go to the Great Beat Extravaganza um, and go to the announcements. And this broadcast should be pinned on the announcements. I'm also broadcasting on all of our regular places that we do for Bead Shop, including our YouTube channel. So it may be easier if you want to um, broadcast this up on your TV or whatever. You can go to our um, um, YouTube channel, uh, beadshop.com, and it's there as well. Okay, so my wrist is six and a half inches. Okay, and when I was designing this, I got my, I just started like this, and I wrapped this cord around my wrist, and I took a look at how many wraps this would give me. And you can see I've got a little bit left over there, but it gives me one, two, three, four, five wraps. And so that's why I made it uh, a five wrap, because that's what fit me. So then we got five. So then I figured, well, each of these sections will have, you know, each of these rounds, go rounds, will have one layer of macrame on it. Okay. So this is what you'll do. You'll kind of wrap to make sure that this is enough leather for you. You can see I've got a lot of leather left over, so it should fit a multitude of wrist sizes, right? And what I did was I didn't worry about measuring anymore, and I just glued this in. So I'm going to glue, then we're going to set this aside, and then we're going to look at kind of how this is set up, okay? So when I glue these clasps, and this is a lovely little narrow um, clasp that fits the five millimeter leather in, you could also use a 10 millimeter clasp and just glue two lengths in side by side, if that makes sense, right? So it would wrap, maybe, you know, you'd maybe use half and half or whatever, um, but we've done that as well. We've got a lot of 10 millimeter 
um, clasps that that would work. But I use just for simplicity and to make it nice and sleek, this little clasp right here. Okay. And so uh, what I do is and this clasp we call it on our website, it's called special delivery. Um, and I always keep the clasp clasped when I glue. All right. And I think you know why. Because what if I take the clasp apart and I glue one side on and then I come in and I glue and I glue the other side on after I'm done. And what if I glue them the wrong side up, right? So that no one loves that, right? So I want to make sure that I keep my clasp closed. But I want to have really good glue management skills, you guys because I don't want to glue this clasp closed. So we need, we need to be a little tidy about this, okay? So uh, the glue that I use and the glue that we recommend here at Bead Shop is this one. Now, I hadn't used this glue before I came to Bead Shop. I um, used a double epoxy, which works well. You could also use E6000, which works well. But this Zap Jewelry Gel, I have been using for almost now the past five years. And I use it when I glue leather into clasps like this. And I love it. J'adore. I think it's just the bee's knees. So um, if you don't have it, we also carry that here at Bead Shop. And it really holds your piece. The thing is, is that it sets up fast which is another thing that's really great for it. But also you've got to be on the ball. You've got to be ready to use it when you extrude your little bit of glue and you're ready to use, okay? So I'm going to get everything prepped. Then I'm going to open up my tube of glue and I'm going to show you how I glue this in. Let me get a little tighter here so you can see this, right? There we go. So I'm, I'm, if your leather doesn't come with a straight across edge, you want to give it a straight across edge. So I'll come in and use my wire cutters. In this case, these are our Zuron Maxi shears, right? And I'm going to click it, clip it, so I get a nice straight across edge. This edge, as, a, as opposed to kind of a janky, sad little edge like this, is going to glue the best. Okay, so now that that's ready, I'm also going to get a toothpick out here. And I'm not going to squirt the glue right onto the clasp. I'm going to use the toothpick as my applicator. Okay, so I'm going to open up my glue, and the glue also has a nice thin tip on it. But when I do this, I just open the glue like this, and I pierced the top, and I extrude just a little bit, just like that. And I've got a baggie here that I'm working on, okay? So now what I do, and we've gotta be neat about this, right? Because we don't want glue getting everywhere. So you wanna kind of eyeball and look and see. So if I push that clasp all the way on the end of my glue, or on the end of my cord, and I pull it out, you can see I've got about that much of glue, of cord that needs to go into. Um, my clasp. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to actually turn it to the back and that's where I'm going to apply my glue because if any glue squirts out right after I put this in the clasp, it'll kind of do that on the back. So if there's any unsightliness, it'll be to the back and not the front. And so I want to make sure then if I'm working with the back of my leather, I'm also working with the back of my clasp. Okay, so I'm just going to come in and I'm going to slide that in and I'm going to push it in like I mean it. And see how I've got a little bit of glue left there. So that's okay. I'm just going to take my toothpick and take it off. Try not to spread it around too much. Just clean it up. Clean it up. And you can see the front is real clean. Right, And when that glue kind of extruded out, and remember I also put glue right on the tip, right on the edge, this blunt edge of the cord. 
um, that also is contacting the back end, the inside of that clasp. Okay. And so this is, so this is good. So I'm going to let this sit here for just a second. Okay. And we're just going to let that set up. In real life, if I wasn't doing this on Beat Extravaganza demo time, I would let this sit. Like, I would work with it. Um, but then before I wear it, I would let it sit 24 hours. Glue likes to cure without being bumped around or jumbled around, right? And so, um, so that's what I do. So I'm going to let that sit there for a second. So... I have another just scrap of leather here that we're going to kind of play around with a little bit. So let's pretend I've got the clasp on the end. So you want to plan a little about where you want your macrame to be. And so my first one, and what I did, you guys, I just started on one end. And as I completed the first round, like let's say I've macrame this, and then I completed the first macrame, I took it off the board, and then I wrapped it again to see where I wanted the macrame to sit, and then I did that one, then I wrapped it. And so every time I completed a section, I tried it on and then made myself a mental note about where to start, if that makes sense. There's no wrong answer here. OK, you can have all of your macrame lined up on the front if that's what you want. One, two, three, four, five. That would look cool. Whatever you want. There's no wrong answer here. OK, so I'm going to measure. What did I measure down this? You know, I don't know. Well, my tape measure is kind of far away from me. Let me see. if I can, Well, I'll reach. Let's see. Let's see what this looks like. This is about, I don't know, I'd go about four inches, three inches, maybe somewhere in that realm. Maybe for this one, I'll go like three inches down and I'll start right there. It's an approximation, okay? I don't want you to get too fussed about it, right? Because like Candy Coop was saying in her show, this has got to be fun, right? We've got to have fun with this. So I want you to have fun. So here... What I'm doing is I'm going to attach it to the board using these clampers that I've got here, but I want to kind of protect my leather. So I'm going to clamp like over a little baggie. Um, this could be a little piece of leather or an old pro, pro polish pad or I don't know, whatever, whatever works for you. But something that just um, kind of helps to, to cushion that leather. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side because the secret to really good macrame like this is having your piece lashed on your board nice and tight, right? So that when you macrame down, everything's going to stay nice and straight. So I don't have another baggie, but it's not going to be on there very long. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my other clamper. Okay. And if you need to lift your cord a little bit, you can slide your Ceylon or something, you know, a spool of something or a little dowel or whatever under there. Okay. That whatever, whatever works for you. Okay. So I'm going to move that piece over. So now these cards, those of you who have the foundry kit, you've got the cards like this right? And so those cards are a one yard piece. So I cut my spool. I cut a one yard piece here. Okay, let me get a little tighter so you can see this. Now I'm not using needles on the ends of these, but you could. But I want to show you another trick that I do. And I think I've still got some left over. That I make little self needles. I still have a little bit of zap here that's still viable. So I'm going to stiffen the ends of my Ceylon by just running them through that zap that's left on my baggie. Okay. And that is going to stiffen the ends and make it really easy, right?
to kind of stiffen those ends so they're like little self needles. This is a great question, right? Uh, let me show you here. What if we are making these bracelets to sell? What's a good thumb of rule uh, rule of thumb on spacing your macrame maps? Uh, macrame wraps. God, I can't read this morning. I can't use my wrist as a guide because it's small. Well, you know, I would make yourself, and I don't have one here, but Janice and I back in the day, we made. I have my little accordion fold one here. But what you can do is you can get, this is just a manila folder that we kind of accordion folded and I lay out beads in here sometimes. But what you can also do is make a roll, roll this up and tape it with some, you know, some packing tape. And I have one that's six and a half inches. That's the same as my um, wrist size. So when I'm making, I can wrap it around and I'm looking for it. I thought I had it stashed here but I don't think I do. Um, it might be in my office maybe, um, but it's really handy. So you can make a couple of different um, kind of wrist guides, you know, and just get some, some cardboard, um, some thin cardboard. This is a manila folder, roll it up, measure it. So it makes that six and a half inch, uh, you know, size or seven inch size or whatever. And then you can use that as your sizer. I think that's a good way to go. So that's a great question. Thank you, thank you. So uh, I'm just going to start, right? No time like the present. So I'm going to start with seed beads, I think, and then I'll move to shadows. Or you can mix them in here, okay? Now I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you want to do this, but let's take a look at this finished section right here, okay? Um, you can see I've started with these flat macrame knots. I've started with a pair of them, and then I went into my beads. And you can see that each bead is offset. So I've done it here on one side, and then I go here on one side. So they're not exactly across, okay? If they were exactly across, and this is the thread right here that I've come in, I've tied that hide that on. This is the thread that comes across, right? If I had put these two beads right straight across from each other, and you'll see it when I do it, this thread wouldn't be here and it would leave a big gap so you could really see the leather there. So it just depends on what you like, right? What, what works for you. So I'm going to do a little bit of both designs. For this seed bead here, I'm gonna do these. Um, I'm gonna do these so that they're offset on this one, and then when I do these, I'll do them so they're straight across. Okay. So let me get started. So I'm gonna just jump in, and I'm gonna find the center here of my cords, and there's my center. And I'm gonna start by making just my macrame flat knot. So I'm going to start on my left side here. And you can see that my thread is going under the flat leather like so. I'm coming around and forming a loop with this leather coming, uh, with the Ceylon coming across the top of the leather. Okay. Now we also have a skill builder on this over at beadshop.com. So if you're like, oh my gosh, Kate, you're going too fast. I'm never going to get this. All you need to do is go over to beadshop.com. Under our learning tab, you'll see skill builders and you'll click on how to tie a flat macrame knot. Um, it's really, uh, you'll, it'll be a great additional information for you. So now I've brought, I have my loop, I've brought this leg and I've come over the thread. Now with the right hand of the thread, I'm going to go under the leather and I'm going to pull it up through the loop. Okay, and that's made my first not. Now I'm going to do the same only in reverse. So I'm going to create a loop going to the right and you can see that looks like a P. That last one we did looked like the letter Q. So this letter P, I get my left hand thread over the tail, under the leather, and up through the loop. Okay. And now that's nice and snug. We want it to be snug. 
but not so tight that it's strangling, right? So I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to go to the P side or the Q side over the left or over the sealant, under the leather, and through the loop. And I'll repeat that again here. Okay. So I've created what I have is my knot, my nice square knot. Uh, two half hitches is what I created to create that one single square knot. Okay, so I have two square knots lined up. And I want you to look really close. Like, let's say the phone rings or, well, that doesn't really happen anymore because no one has a landline. But what if the doorbell rings and, well, we're social distancing, so that doesn't really happen. But what if you had to go get some coffee or something like that, right? And you walked away from this project and you came back and you're all, oh, holy cow, I don't know where I was. Can you see on this side here how there's this little scallop? I know that if I look for that little scallop, because this side doesn't have it, that this is the side I start up on. Okay, so this is the side that my loop um, is going to start on. Okay, so I'm going to put a bead in that loop, and I'm going to do this as the offset one. Okay, so I'm going to put a bead down that loop, and I'm just going to now forget it's there, get my right hand cord over the cord, under the leather, and up through the loop. And this was a yard of cord here. Okay, so it's about um, it's about a yard, right? And I'm basing that on what we gave you on these little cards. You could certainly use more, but if you have the kit that we've called Quarry, um, you'll get a yard on each cord. So see there, I've tied one bead. So now I'm going to do this second one. I'm going to come in. See how nice and stiff that zap made this cord too? That bead just slides on. I slide it on. And now I forget about it, right? I'm just going to slide it on. Now I'm going to tie my loop or tie my knot. So over the cord, under the leather, and up through the loop. Okay. And if it comes loose a little bit, just tighten it. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to, what did I do? I think I tied a pair of flat knots, but you could just do one. So maybe I'll just do one here, one set of half hitches to make a full square knot. And then I'll add beads again, All right? So here's my left hand cord. I'll come in, slide this down. And just as a reminder, you guys, if you're like, you know, Kate, I'm not making this along with you. I want to make it later. If you go to beadshop.com and you go to the project page, this video will be embedded, okay? So, don't worry about, you know, that you're like, oh my gosh, I've got to work along with you. Don't, don't stress, okay? So you just keep going until you like the looks of this. So I'm going to tie another single knot, a single half hitch, and do it again. And I love the way the gray um, really picks up the side painting of this leather. I think it's delicious. And I also love how um, it's a great neutral that goes beautifully with this blue. And so I continued on and I macrameed the full length of the thread. Okay. And it's going to be longer or shorter depending on the beads that you use. And let me show you what I mean by that. See, here's this one and the tension that you're using, whatever. See how this one here I've done feels like my stitches are a little wider, but maybe not. Maybe that's just a visual. I don't know. Right. Um, but I just went and I finished, I stopped when I ran out of thread. Okay, we're going to pretend that I've run out of thread here because I want to show you how to close this off and then start the other one with the shadows. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get um, a needle, a collapsible eye needle. And if there's time at the end, I'm going to show you how to... Um, 
how to make one if there's time. I hope there will be. But these are our collapsible eye needles. And you could also use a big eye needle for this or something, but whatever has a large eye, right? And I finished off with two um, sets of knots. So I'll do that again here. I'll do one more here and here. Okay. Now I'd be doing this with smaller tails because I would have used this whole length. Okay. So then I'll unclamp and I'll turn this to the back. Now what I'm going to do and some people, what they like to do is they like to insert this needle and macrame over the top. What I like to do is I just like to kind of bring the needle underneath my macrame. And it really only needs to come about that far. Okay. Now, I've got to, let me set this back up. And let me get a little drop cloth underneath because you're going to see what I'm going to do here. Let me, let me get this ready. Got to get it ready. Bear with me here just a second. Okay, there we go. All right. So my needle is here. If it's getting loose, just tighten it back up. And I'm going to put the ends of my cord through that needle one going towards the left. Come on, babes. And one going towards the right. And I want the loops to be kind of big here, right? I don't want to tighten it up because this thread needs to travel underneath. Okay? So watch what I do. I'm going to... Whoops, what happened here? Am I still good? There we go. Sorry, I thought that I saw the picture bow out. I was stressing for a second. Right at the point where everybody's got to see. So here I'm just pulling this in. And see how those tails are following that needle. But wait, there's more. Okay. So I'm going to kind of gently kind of pull to see which ones are the tails. And I want to pull those tails out. So here's one of the tails. So this must be the other tail. So I'm left with a little set of ears here. Okay. Now, kids. I'm getting my GS hypo. You could use Zap for this if you wanted, but GS is a little more flexible than the Zap. I've already taken the lid off here. And I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to the thread that's going to live under the macrame. Does that make sense? Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area, kids, because the glue's a little stinky. Now I'm going to come in and pull gently so that both of those ears go underneath. And now I'm going to dab that a little bit to get the extra glue off. And this is why I'm working from the back. So if there's any extra glue or anything like that, you're only going to see it on the reverse. So then I just kind of come in and I tighten everything up. And see how it looks nice and neat underneath there. And you can see how it looks nice and neat on the top. And I'm going to come in and just give myself a touch more glue right at the end right there. The GS um, darkens the thread just a little. It'll dry a little bit lighter. So don't stress about it too much. But notice here how I'm also gluing just the little um, scallops there, gluing a little bit here on the end. And what I would do is I would just go on to my next one. You know, you can cut your threads kind of short and then wait 24 hours and cut them later. But I'm going to just cut them now. 
um, so you can see that it's done. All right, but we, we don't, the thing with glue is it likes to be left alone, kind of like Greta Garbo, right? It doesn't want to be disturbed. So you got to let it sit at least 12 hours, better overnight, 24 hours is better, right? Then it'll set and then it won't come apart, okay? So there's that, right? And it's under there. It's not going to go anywhere. All right, so let's go to our next section. We're going to do the section with the shadows, and we're going to do those shadows across from each other, okay? So I'm just going to go. So now if I were trying this on, the glue's a little wet, right? But I'll make this maneuver that we all do when we're trying to try on a bracelet, right? I'll come in, and I'll kind of wrap it around, and I'll go, maybe I want my next section to be, I don't know, here, I guess. I don't know. I'm just, I'm guessing, right? So I'm going to I'm going to clip it onto my board if I can clip it from there clip it on bring it across so let me clip let me cut that yard of cord that's about a yard let me put the lid back on the hypo cement that Richburg is playing with fire right there there we go put that in so now, <clears throat> let's use those shadow beads. And we're doing good on time. We've got, I don't want to go over at all, so because Jill McKay is coming up next. So I won't put any of my glue on the ends here, right? So I'll just start with my two knots, my two overhand, find the center, and do two half hitches, one half hitch two half hitches. Again, I'm going at Kate speed here. It's what I call Kate speed. Because again, you've got all of these resources on beadshop.com for these skill builders to do this macrame flat knot. And that's all this design is, my darling darlings, is this macrame flat knot in whatever kind of grouping you want, right? So, um, I'm going to go here and put on one bead. And I'm going to go here and put on another. And I would advise you, you guys, to watch this, even if you already have your kit. I would watch this broadcast several times so you're up and running. You can do a little bit of practice and stuff, right? Um, so, And then break it out. And then, and then go for it, right? So see how I've got the two beads, I put them on at the same time and then tied my knot. And see how I've got an opening there, right? Just a plain opening. So I'm gonna tie two, one and two. Get a little bit of space. And then I think what I did was I actually did Four. So I'm going to tie two more so I get a little bit of space in between. Okay, there we go. And I'll put on my shadows again to the left, to the right. make that and I know what side I'm going for right because look at this if I put them on and I'm all oh holy heck what am I doing where am I right I look at my knot and I go oh there's the scallop right can you see how on this side there's no little scallop the scallop is up there not down here so I know that's my loop Make a loop at the side of the scallop. So I'm going to make this loop with my right hand cord. I'm going to come over the top of that cord that's coming over the leather, under the leather, reach through that loop, under the leather, grab the cord and pull it up. And there's your knot. Okay? And I'll immediately reverse it. Make that loop under the leather, over the cord, under the leather, and up through the loop. Two half hitches make one square knot. And I'll do it again at Kate speed. A little bit of practice, you guys. Give yourself permission to practice. Give yourself permission to try. 
and give yourself permission to screw up. Okay, that's all of those things as we're learning. You know, we learn new things all the time. And I've been doing this now for almost 30 years. So I make jewelry making look super easy. But whatever you've been doing for the last 30 years, if I attempted it, I probably would be a clumsy mess, right? At whatever job you do. So it would take practice for me. So just, you know, just be gentle with yourself. Practice, get some practice thread. Don't even do this right away, right? And if you don't glue anything down, you can cut this, right? You could even try with some larger thread that you might have hanging around or like, you know, kitchen twine like this that's heavy or whatever. Give yourself a little bit of practice and then jump in. All right, because Rome was not built in a day and nor were all of your um, jewelry skills, right? And so this is really pretty, this little short one here. Then I do the same thing. I come around to the back. I would insert my needle that I have now lost uh, here. Here it is. And I would, and it's the collapsible eye beetle uh, needle that I like using for this because it's kind of stiff. And again, I would just walk it underneath there. It doesn't have to go real far, right? It really could just go under this first set, or you could have it go under the second set or the first part of the second set. Right? Tighten those bad boys up. Pull this in on one side, this on the other. You don't want your loops, again, to be too um, small because when you go to pull those loops down under your macrame, there, there won't be enough give here to, to go underneath. So you've got to have a little bit of room. Then once your needle clears, right, then I clear my tails and kind of put my thumb there and kind of figure out which strand or the tails, that's a tail. So if that's a tail there, this, nope, that's not a tail. This one must be the other tail. There it is. Then before these curl and go underneath, what do I do right here? I put a little glue here, a little glue here, and pull it tight. Okay, then add my little bit more glue. I'm not going to glue this yet uh, because I don't want to fiddle with the um, hypo cement quite at this very second, but I will cut the rest of those tails off so you can kind of see. So you can see here, I've got these two short sections, right? And the two long, the long sections that I did on the real sample, which seems to have fallen on the floor. There it is. I see you. You can't hide from me. This is the full one yard length that I did. Okay. So uh, just meander, right? Have your little, have your little journey. And if you come in and you wrap and you're like, oh, wait a minute, I want something else over here. Um, you know, and especially if you're doing this kit with the larger spool of thread, um, you can, you know, add a little more or whatever, right? Or if you have wire, right? You want to make a little wire wrap connection or something there, right? The This is a springboard for you to kind of jump off into your design journey, okay? So I hope, um, I hope you enjoyed this, right? Um, I, I enjoyed this. It always seems like we have too short of a time together here at the Great Beat Extravaganza. But I did say that I would um, just uh, uh, tell you where to get everything. Of course, you guys, you can uh, find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website at beadshop.com. Sign up for our newsletter, you guys, um, for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. We have new stuff coming in all the time. We've got wonderful broadcasts. We've got uh, our dear friend Emily Miller is coming next week and is going to be with us on Wednesday and Friday for our broadcasts, um, an episode of Seed Bead School focusing on fringe and uh, a great new design that she has. You can also find us on social. Follow us at beadshop.com 
uh, on our Instagram. Uh, join our group at the bead table and subscribe and like us on our YouTube channel that you're watching right now. And of course, you can find me on my social as well um, at Bead Kate, my Facebook group, Create with Kate Richburg at Kate Richburg on my YouTube channel and of course KateRichburg.com. You can also, I will do this real quick, if you want to grab any buttons um, to do your own wrap, you can find those right at my website at KateRichburgJewelry.com. And of course, you guys, um, all of the kits and everything will be on our bead shop uh, homepage. We're going to restock those right at noon Pacific time. So almost 30 minutes from now, there'll be another bunch of those in stock. Of course, you can always shop our flat leather. We've got a ton of flat leather. You can choose your own adventure with this, you guys. Grab some flat leather, grab some shadows beads, grab a regular Ceylon in a color that you like, um, and, and jump in and, and create your own design too would be great for that. Uh, let's see, I am going to come back. There I am. Alrighty. Well, I think you guys had a good time. Um, I hope you did. So many of you are watching. We really, really appreciate your, um, your, uh, likes and your shares and your follows you know being a small business especially this last year during this pandemic we couldn't have made it through without you so we really really this small woman-owned business really appreciates you from wherever you are all over the globe thank you so much janice for watching our fearless leader she's watching and and, and um linking over on youtube um and our wonderful Gita over on Facebook. Uh, we hope to see you guys on our regular weekly broadcast right on the beadshop.com homepage. And uh, I also broadcast very frequently right onto the Great Bead Extravaganza page. So you can pick up those broadcasts there as well. Um, I did want to also mention um that you'll want to join the giveaway the giveaway link if you look in the great beat extravaganza you'll see a picture of candy cooper's hand showing all three of the three gift baskets filled with stuff right go in what you do is you trade your email for an entry to win um and there's such a bunch of great stuff um that are in there so um so jump in and i see a comment here someone said this was great and your business logo is beautiful thank you so much you can see that logo whoops right over this shoulder right there there it is um that's a watercolor actually that janice did um so she actually watercolored that logo when we changed over our website so it really is a beautiful um a beautiful thing it's based on on a wrap bracelet there so it's kind of it's kind of cool so thanks again my dears stay tuned the wonderful jill mckay will be up in about a half hour to share some of her great tips and tricks and fun things with you guys i know you're going to enjoy the rest of these two days uh, the rest of today and into tomorrow i know i will i'm going to be watching everybody like a hawk because i learned so much during these shows so it's awesome Thank you again so much for your support. And I'll see you on our live broadcast on Wednesday, uh, right on beadshop.com with Emily Miller. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a fantastic weekend. Love to you. Happy spring. Talk to you soon.